few years ago, our broadband speed was terrible. So when Starlink became available in my area, I had to place an order. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the Starlink service and discussing its features, pros and cons, and overall performance. We'll also be taking Starlink roaming as you can now travel with it. First up, let's talk about what the Starlink service is and what makes it so different. The Starlink service aims to provide high speed, low latency broadband worldwide, especially to areas that traditionally struggle to get a decent internet connection. Having a space-based internet service provider is not new. But where Starlink takes this idea, it improves upon it by reducing the height of the satellites in space. And this means that the distance the signal travels from the ground station to space is so much shorter. This gives us a much quicker, faster, responsive signal. Or, as we say in the tech space, a lower latency. SpaceX is a private American aerospace manufacturer founded about 20 years ago by Elon Musk. The company gained fame for the successful launch and recovery of reusable orbital rocket boosters. It's also made strides in developing a super heavy launch vehicle called the Falcon Heavy. SpaceX has contracts with the US government to supply the International Space Station. Internet service from space is not new. The first commercially available internet service was launched, pardon the pun, in around 2003. But the performance was relatively poor and really expensive. Now, 10 years later, by 2013, you'd be lucky to get downstream data as fast as 12 to 15 megabits per second. It takes about 250 milliseconds, so a quarter of a second for a packet of information to travel from your ground station up, back down again, back up again, and back down again. A quarter of a second is really, really bad. Now, it's not too bad, really, for downloading something if you're downloading email, say, but it's really, really bad for things like voice calls. You can't wait a quarter of a second to receive the data and uh, it can lead to really garbled messages. So the main features of the Starlink service are high speed. You get around 152 to 250 megabits per second down, sometimes faster, sometimes during peak periods it can be a little bit slower, but it's really, really quick. You also get it for a reasonable cost. Now, when the SpaceX launched this service in my area about two years ago, I was paying nearly 90 pounds or as many dollars a month. I'm now paying 75 as they've reduced the cost. There are also generous usage allowances. So in my area, which is the Isle of Man, we actually have no usage allowance at all. So it is completely unlimited. But there are areas of high congestion currently where SpaceX has added uh, what's called sort of a traffic shaping style uh, fair usage allowance. So if people are using lots of peer-to-peer -peer network sharing, BitTorrent, that sort of thing, then you can expect your speed to be reduced after a certain amount, which is pretty generous, but still SpaceX is working on building up the infrastructure in space so that everyone, even in the congested areas, can have good service. Starlink satellites have got laser links to link them to each other and much better networking equipment, which can throughput much more data. And using Starlink couldn't be simpler. Now the instructions say, put Dishy outside, looking at the sky, plug in, switch on, and you're done. But it's not actually that simple. You are going to need to have a clear view of the sky. Now, two years ago, or if you're looking on YouTube at older reviews, you're going to find a lot of difficulties where people are trying to find a place to put dishy. Putting it in a garden might not work. Putting it in a yard also might not work. You need to get it somewhere where it's got clear views horizon to horizon. Now, the technology that Dishy uses with its phase array antenna means that Dishy doesn't move around constantly. It finds its best position, its best altitude, its best attitude, sorry, um, and then it uses lots and lots of antennas inside it to interfere with itself, to actually point and to beam form its beam to get the best signal to pick the best satellite. So the satellites move across the sky pretty quickly and this year isn't moving physically, but it will need to track a satellite and anything that gets in its way is going to block that beam and you will notice a blip in your connection. So even something as small as a very faint twig from a distant tree, if the satellite passes over that, you're gonna lose your signal. Now, things have gotten a lot better as they've added new satellites to their network. We're not so dependent anymore on having a precise, needing a precise view of the horizon to horizon as Starlink can now hop over and hand over from one satellite to another as they move in and out of view. So I've got both the Starlink dishes. The rectangular version two is actually functionally identical to the version one. It is cheaper to produce for SpaceX, which is why they're now shipping these instead of the circular dishes. 
there are a couple of really interesting points to know, and that is that nowadays when you buy a version 2, you get a waterproof Wi-Fi router. The disadvantage to this strangely waterproof outdoor router is that it has no Ethernet port. What's that, you hear me say? Yes, it has no Ethernet port, so you will need to buy an additional Ethernet adapter for about $30 to $40. And on the plus side, at least the power adapter is watertight with its double gasket. Now the first dishy, whilst the router does come with an Ethernet port for your local LAN, um, the actual power over Ethernet cable that's connected to the dishy is not replaceable at all. Um, the only way you could get it replaced is by sending it back to California, which is very inconvenient. Starlink can deliver latencies as low as 20 milliseconds. Now I typically find latencies between 20 to 40 milliseconds is fairly typical. Now traditional fibre is around that. Uh, modern fibre is even better and you're going to find that if you can get a fibre connection, you're going to want that rather than Starlink. Even at £75 per month, this is still very competitive compared to local fibre offerings. Of course we can't get them, but even if we could, this is still on par. SpaceX has promised download speeds of up to a gigabit per second in the future, so this is definitely a very future-proof system, I do believe that. In 2022, they launched 61 times, each time reusing a piece of rocket airframe from a previous launch. Gone are the days of bits of rockets in the ocean. Version 2 Starlink involves the use of laser links between the satellites. Now, light in a vacuum is the fastest thing in physics that there is, so the latencies will be even lower when hopping between the satellites. This is even faster than light traveling in fiber optic cables. Light in a fiber optic cable is not quite perfect. It has to bounce about and it isn't a vacuum, whereas light in space is. In practice, this will give SpaceX the ability to accommodate more customers and give unprecedentedly low latencies around the world. For gamers, you can imagine gaming on servers all around the world as if you were local. This makes Starlink an excellent, no perfect option for people living in rural or difficult to reach communities um, that may not have access to or have access to quite flaky internet services. Uh, this year Starlink has been a decisive benefit in Ukraine. Who would have been cut off otherwise? I just can't emphasize enough quite how good the latency is for on Starlink for services like online games and Teams calls, meetings and the like. It is just great, there is literally no issue um, except for those very, very rare global internet outages that do happen from time to time. They have been rare, I would say. Um, you tend to get a bunch of people on Twitter all at the same time saying, hey, is Starlink down for everyone or just me? Um, but it's very, very rare. It is much more reliable than even our local uh, fiber providers are. And if you want to roam with your Starlink dishy, that will cost you an additional £25 or dollars per month. There are no contracts. You can start and stop your service as much as you like. You can add on extras such as the £25 or dollars roaming um, per month um, on or off as you like via the app. There do seem to be some rumours about the price increasing in 2023 to $599 for the hardware and $110 per month for the service. Now, this remains to be seen. Stay tuned, I will keep you updated with a community post or on my Twitter, if they do. And uh, now I'm gonna talk about light pollution. I have not scripted this, so it's just gonna be off the cuff. Because the more stuff that gets into space, it does interfere with ground-based scientific astronomy observations. Now, the way these things interfere, say for example, on the visual spectrum, if man-made objects or satellites are crossing the field of view that you're currently observing, say with your visual telescope, they will catch the sunlight, which will glint off them and that will reflect down. This manifests itself as great big stripes through an image, blocking it out. Now, I suppose it's less of a problem for amateur astronomers or astrophotographers like myself, but it is a problem for professionals. Now, SpaceX is, has been working with various astronomical organizations to reduce the effects that their satellites have on astronomical observations and images, predominantly by painting the satellites black, by changing the angle of the solar panels on the satellites so that they don't reflect the sun back down towards Earth, and also more recently by liaising with astronomical institutes to arrange to move the satellites away from fields 
of observation. Now, obviously that isn't available to every scientific body, so it is worth thinking about. Starlink has a few thousand satellites in orbit and they plan to add 10x to that. But Starlink isn't the only service that's looking to provide low latency, high broadband service to Earth. There are a number of competitors as well. And by the time everyone's finished, observations of the night sky could be severely hampered and I really hope this doesn't happen. If this video has been useful to you, please like it and drop a comment down below. This tells the YouTube algorithm, hey, recommend this to other people. Um, that'd be really useful for me. I'm putting a ton of effort into making these YouTube videos and I intend to make more. You might have noticed the last one was two weeks ago and this one's two weeks later. I'm trying to get it down to a week. So if you would like to see more, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you really like this sort of content, then I'd encourage you to press the bell icon as well. And that will give you a little notification inside the YouTube app when I post a new video so that you don't miss out. If you've watched this far, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Three, two, one, four. Is it